Welcome back to the Berkeley at Home Variety Show. I'm Patrick Holmes, and yes, it did take me forever to tie this bow tie. On this week's episode, we reveal the university medalists, we get an update on the Peregrine Falcons, and we get tips for better cooking at home. A few weeks ago, we highlighted Blockly, an effort by a group of students to recreate the Berkeley campus in Minecraft. Well, clearly Trevor Noah saw our report because Blockly was featured on The Daily Show this week. UC Berkeley's class of 2020 is getting creative when it comes to celebrating their achievements. We are recreating the entire UC Berkeley campus in Minecraft to host a commencement ceremony. It's going to be an open day for everyone to just explore campus, kind of relive their memories, take photos. I'm imagining just the entire campus-wide party. Bravo! These kids recreated their entire campus in a Minecraft video game? They did this just so that they could get together for one last hurrah. And you know, this reminds me of when I spent a semester studying abroad in the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> Young love, j'attem Bowser, j'attem. The University of Blockley commencement will take place this Saturday at 2 p.m. and will feature speeches and guest appearances by Chancellor Carol Christ and Vice Chancellor Mark Fisher. As always, you'll find links to everything mentioned in this week's episode down below. Let's face it, last week's scavenger hunt was a little hard, but who better to guess the identity of 12 famous women who graduated from Berkeley than two staff members who they themselves are alumni? Congratulations to Nancy Blattel and Erin Proudfoot, who both achieved perfect scores. For this week's scavenger hunt, we're back to the multiple choice format, so even a newbie like me has a chance of getting some answers right. The topic is research field stations. Did you know that UC Berkeley has field stations all over the world? I'm learning so much from these scavenger hunts. I hope you too will check them out. As always, you'll find a link to this week's virtual scavenger hunt down below. If you're like me, you've been wondering how Mike Durda is going to top last week's update on the Peregrine Falcons. Let's see how he did. Breaking news, that's right, breaking news. Last week, we talked about how the falcon chicks nesting on top of the campanile were forming immature feathers called pin feathers because they're covered in a sheath that makes them look like a pin. The term used for feathers emerging and unfurling from their pins is breaking. And you can see that the chicks' feathers on their wings have started to break. Get it? Breaking news. The pin feathers are breaking. I'll be here all week. Don't forget to tip your server. So what else is new in the world of cow falcons? Well, we just had banding day. That's the day when an authorized wildlife management expert places a color and number coded band like a bracelet on the chick's legs. This allows them to be studied and tracked more easily as they grow up. And the ever exciting contest to name the chicks will begin on Tuesday, May 12th. Go to calfalcons.berkeley.edu slash names to submit your suggestions and visit this weekend to vote on finalists. I don't know what the final names will end up being, but Facebook user Joanna Ruthenberg nominates Purell, Clorox, and Bounty. Back to you, Patrick. Anna Boser has been named UC Berkeley's top graduating senior. I actually love and hate statistics. A lot of it is really boring, crunching numbers, but what's really, really beautiful and wonderful about it is understanding how these insane simulations or tests work. What is the math behind it? And um, how can you take these numbers and turn them into something useful? And I think that is just so exciting. I take data sets on where and when prescribed burns and wildfires have happened in California, and I combine those with drone or satellite imagery on where the smoke plumes are with another data set which tells me the levels of pollutants that are in the air. And I mix them all together in my laptop and out comes this wonderful result. You can answer so many great questions. Doing public health work and now also environmental science work is something that's really fulfilling to me because um, I'm not only doing something that I really love to do, but I also know that it's having a positive impact. You can read more about Anna's accomplishments and watch a video about Anna on Berkeley News. And while you're at it, be sure to check out another video we have linked below. It features faculty from across UC Berkeley coming together to wish students good luck on their finals. New opportunities to cope through COVID-19 keep popping up. The Archaeological Research Facility is teaming up to offer a free online viewing of the film The Final Passage. Art of Writing has launched a new feature on their website called Pandemic Diaries. 
The music department has a collection of videos that they compiled for Cow Week. And in the latest episode of the podcast Berkeley Talks, Poet Laureate Robert Haas reads from his new collection, Summer Snow. A lot of us have been doing a lot more cooking lately. That's why we asked Kim Guess, a dietitian with the Be Well at Work program, to give us a tip for cooking during shelter in place. Hey everyone, I'm really quickly going to show you how to make your own vegetable broth at home essentially for free. So all you have to do is save vegetable scraps until you have enough. You'll definitely want things like the peels from onions and carrots, garlic and celery, really any stalk, stems, cores or peels, leeks, mushrooms and green onions are also really great. So once you have enough, you're going to put it in a big pot of water with some herbs, fresh or dried like rosemary, thyme or bay leaves. You can also add peppercorns, tomato paste, or nutritional yeast for extra flavor. Simmer it for about an hour, strain it, and cool it. You can keep it in an old pasta sauce jar in your refrigerator, or if you make too much or want to have it available later, freeze it in any old ice cube tray and keep it in the freezer until you're ready to use it. So you can use this broth to make soups, stews, chilies, risotto, or use it to cook your grains for extra flavor. You can find a lot more tips, recipes, and these great videos where you can actually cook along with Kim, all on the Cook Well Berkeley webpage. As part of our ongoing celebration of 150 years of women at Berkeley, the 150W Executive Committee recorded this message congratulating the class of 2020. We'll leave you with that video. Thank you for watching and see you next week. We are here as members of the 150 Years of Women at Berkeley Executive Committee to congratulate you and your family and friends on your graduation from our beloved university. This is a remarkable year, and you are all members of a remarkable and resilient class. You've celebrated the return of the Axe, go Bears. You're experiencing historic elections. You've weathered power outages and fires, and you're courageously dealing with an unprecedented pandemic. Another reason you're a part of a remarkable class lies in a resolution passed 150 years ago on October 3rd, 1870, where the regents unanimously resolved that young ladies be admitted into the university on equal terms in all aspects with young men. The campus has been celebrating this historic event throughout this calendar year. Since 1870, hundreds of thousands of women have graduated from Cal. They include writers such as Beverly Cleary, Joan Didion, Terry McMillan, and Rebecca Solnit, Oscar winner, winner Edith Heed, Nobel laureates such as Francis Arnold and Carol Greeter, the culinary pioneer Alice Waters, Olympic champions Natalie Coughlin and Helen Willis, the physicist Chen Chung Wu, Member of Congress Barbara Lee, engineers and architects including Lillian Gilbert and Julia Morgan, educational pioneers such as Jessica Peixoto and Millicent Chin, and champions of social justice, Del Martin, Phyllis Lyon, and Mabel Croft. As part of the history project associated with the celebration, stories have been gathered chronicling the triumphs of our alumni in the face of challenges, including a flu epidemic, disenfranchisement, economic turmoil, world war, internment, civil unrest, sexual harassment, and discrimination. These remarkable women have helped pave the way for you, and now you will help pave the way for others. We hope you stay in touch with, you, with each other in the campus, rejoice in your triumphs, and stand tall as the heirs and heiresses to a remarkable legacy of women at Berkeley. Thank you to you and your families. Congratulations to you all. Fiat Lux. And go, go Bears! Bears.